All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. I am sorry I've been away. A lot of work. Uh, end of the month, beginning of the year, I just got slammed with work, which is a good thing. <laughs> All right, so I've been uh, sort of taking some time out, a lot of video and editing, um, so yeah, pretty time consuming, so now I'm kind of getting back to it, and I hope you had a great holiday, and Happy New Year to you, okay? So here's what's up. We're going to take a look at some gears, and making some gears, and you know, just sort of doing something like what looks like is here, and um, you may say, hey... I like gears too. Everybody loves gears, um, whether they're wooden, concrete, metal. What I have going here, uh, I'll show you a render really quick. <clears throat> this is the render, and essentially I'm just testing out some materials on these gears. And um, yeah, so it's just a basic exercise. But um, what I'm really interested in is the creation of these gears. And I'm going to show you some little tricks and some helpful tools to get gears done. And in this case, I'm going to go back to my, uh, I think I'll just go back to my regular perspective camera here for a sec. And uh, let's see, I think I have the grid turned off, so we'll go back down and turn the grid on. And really creating this gears was like, it took me literally two seconds. And you'll say, hey, how did that only take you two seconds, Stu? Well, I went to create, I went to polygon primitives, came down here to my gear option, and there should be a gear sitting in there somewhere <laughs> and uh, if your gear is not in there take a look through your uh, let's take a look through this view there's my gear okay not that gear but there's a gear that's hiding out underneath there and I may have to go to my outliner to find it so I'm gonna go to the outliner and we'll bring the outliner up and there it is it's basically um, this FE poly gear and that's the one right there so I just created a gear and I can start playing around with it and do some various things if I add uh, let's go into shaded mode and let's take a look at this gear I'm gonna do an F and come up on it there it is okay right now it's in wireframe so I may want to look for whether or not I have my textures my wireframe it doesn't have a material assigned to it right now so I'm going to go ahead and assign it a material just randomly. I think I'll, I'll choose like some existing material that I have here. So we'll give it a blend, whatever. Okay, so there's the gear. Now, once I create this gear, I can come over here and look at the different attributes for this gear. I can make a bore radius equal, you know, whatever. Do a big bore. I can go with a root radius, make that out there a little more. I can come in and do a pitch radius, which is, you know, the pitch of the, the teeth there. And I, saw, I can do a tip radius, too. So, pretty cool. Add some cogs if I want to add some cogs. I can make the cog width a little bit bigger, a little smaller, whatever. And give it a little twist. Maybe you want them twisting that way, or you want them twisting that way. And then, you know, to top it off, I could actually come up here into my deformers and actually maybe attach, you know, some sort of uh, some sort of lattice, and then go ahead and maybe take that lattice and and uh, attach a um, a bend to it or something. I don't know. So we could go to the bend, come into the bend one, and give it some curves. So offsetting it, kind of, you know slicing it whatever I mean you can do all sorts of stuff with this uh, it's really cool and I'm going to show you kind of how to get a hold of these extra well they're extra primitives basically um, and there's a really cool little script this guy wrote and I'm going to show that to you now and it basically gives us all sorts of other options here to do modeling with so let's take a look at that um, I was over on creative crash <clears throat> and a guy by the name of Felix Uber, or Kjaft, I think that's what he goes by on Creative Craft, uh, wrote a script called Effie Primitives uh, 0.91. And um, yeah, Felix Uber, thank you very much. Great handy little script because it makes gears and stuff, so you can go ahead and do that. So anyway, if you go over to Creative Crash, um, check out the just you know, search for FE primitives 0.91 or KJAFT, 
and you'll come up with um, you know the script right here and go ahead and download that it's free so thank you very much uh, Felix and uh, grab that and as soon as you do that you'll probably want to quit Maya um, be before you install this so go ahead and quit Maya I'm just gonna minimize Maya and inside the zip package uh, you'll find a folder called FE primitives and within that folder there's you know some installation instructions there's some short documentation a little license text and then there's also versions for Linux and the Mac and Windows I'm on Mac so I chose the Mac OS 10 2011 and there's three little uh, folders in here which have some various files in them pretty easy has some icons and it has some plugins and some scripts so essentially what you want to do is find the version that you need inside of that that uh, main folder that that main fe primitives folder and uh, you know just choose whichever one um, suits you best and then what basically i did is i i took the mac 2011 stuff and i plugged used the icons i basically just copied and pasted them into my Maya 2011 scripts folder in the um, icons right there I did the same for the plugins and the same for the scripts so the plugins I think there's two of them there's one that handles curves and there's another one that handles the polys so you know those are the plugins and if I look at this folder there they are and then I copied and pasted these scripts from the main folder there into my scripts folder so everything was cool after that and nothing to worry about so you know just take your time um, just install those in the right folders and you'll be a-okay and it does come with some uh, you know installation instructions in case you're a little foggy so there it is now once you get those installed you'll want to go ahead and start Maya back up I'm gonna bring Maya up uh, again there because I had it minimized and if you go to your window you want to come down to your settings and preferences and make sure you look in your plugin manager and they should be in my case they end up in the top here so here they are here's the primitives for the curves and here's the polys just make sure that these are checked and you are good to go and if all goes well you'll soon come up into your uh, create menu up here come to your polygons and you'll notice that you have these options now in this case I have a beveled cube option a bevel cylinder a capsule and let's go ahead and just make one of each of these I'm gonna go ahead and do a beveled cube so I made a cube and it is interactively creating this beveled cube so essentially I'm gonna give that a little bit more scale uh, hold on for just a second here I got an interruption Okay, so I've got the beveled cube. Now I'm also going to come into the create menu. We're going to go to polygon primitives and we'll go ahead and check the next one down, which is a beveled cylinder. And interactive creation is on for these, so it'll sort of automatically just sort of create the shape for you. You don't really have to uh, think much about it. I'm going to go ahead and go, we're going to create the, let's see, let's, we did a capsule. Uh, no, actually, we didn't do the capsule yet. Here's the capsule bring that back I'll put it over there let's go back to the create menu polygon primitives and then come into your beveled tube there's a beveled tube for you so you get the idea there's all sorts of shapes involved with this script and you'll be able to adjust all of the properties if you just select the object and um, work with it in your attribute editor so let's go to the star the star can actually be used to make gears as well or the flower just depending on what um, what shape you need or want desire etc etc et I'm gonna go back to create polygon primitive and let's see let's take the flower we'll just sort of make one of each of these shapes that um, Felix has provided in this uh, script I'll go to polygon primitives we'll do the gear and here's my standard gear which I've been using in um, in this tutorial so I'm gonna bring this back and I might actually give this guy a little bit more scale alright go back to create polygon primitive that's the gear 
and the standard profile, which is really helpful. Um, the standard profile um, can help do buildings and stuff like that. I don't know, whatever you need it for. So let me get onto this star. I'm going to move this thing back. And there it is. Or is that a star or a flower? I think this is a flower. And sometimes, you know, they're going to come out without any textures on them. And you may have to select that object and just maybe assign it a default material. Like, say, oh, I'll just go back to my normal Lambert 1. And that might happen every now and then. And as well, you should be aware that on this cube, there is a triangle issue. And it's talked about in the bugs. It's no big deal. Um, it's just that these come out as tries right up here. And that kind of that kind of limits some subdivision and things like that without being aware of that. So you may want to change these into quads if you have to. Okay, so just another quick tip there. And essentially that's it. Um, oh, as well you can create um, nerves. Um, they basically included a, a filleted square curve. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge that. So you can see where, you know, you, you already have a filleted curve. Um, let's do the NURBS, let's see, the four-sided. We can do a four-sided. I'm going to bring this up a little bit and maybe just move that. And it also comes with the, um, with the gear shape for a NURBS shape. So if you go to NURBS and you come down here, let's, let's look at the gear. So you can basically apply an extrusion to this, um, to this, curve all right so all sorts of potential there um, let's take a look at now if you choose any of these objects there's going to be you know lots of parameters to play around with for example if i choose this um this uh, make poly flower shape over here and let's just zoom in on that um, you'll notice you got the radius, and in some cases you might want to stay with the normal shape of what this this curve is providing you. You got another radius over here. You got some height going there. Here we've got petals. You can increase it, and you can pretty much do this with any of these objects. Um, they all have some um, specific kinds of parameters to deal with over there. Let's take a look at this um, poly tube. Uh, we've got a radius right there. We could, you know, thin out the radius, make it a little larger. We can make that a lot thicker. We can sort of, you know, give it a little bit more flay around the end. Uh, you get the idea. Do some height things with it. Um, and then you can, you know, move the sides. You can give it some more siding. Depending on how you're going to smooth these, you know, you may want to add some divisions there. Maybe want to add some fillet segments up toward the top there to get a little smoother roll. And you can add some more on your cap area, whatever. But you get the idea. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with these. Now, look at all those primitives. Those are like not included by default in Maya. So that's kind of what you want to be, be doing is take a look at that. And then, you know, play around with those a little bit. I kind of used them to do that quick animation and sort of just do some rough texturing to kind of get an idea of where I wanted to go with, you know, some gears on the background of some metal. Um, it's for a composite that I'm doing. It's totally unrelated, but this was a starting point. And I thought it might be interesting and cool for you to not have to build gears like this uh, individually by extruding faces and stuff. So anyway... A very cool deal. So remember, go check out the um, FE Primitives on Creative Crash uh, by KJAFT. And always check out Lester Banks, of course. Um, I hope Lester's having a good new year. I didn't have time to work up a little new segment for him, but that is coming. Okay? So, hey, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great new year. And we'll get back to it. I might be a little slower uh, getting tutorials posted because I have a lot of new stuff I'm going to upgrade to Maya 2012 or 2013 or whatever the next version is I I'm debating whether I should get 2012 and then make the upgrade I was hoping to hear some news um, that you know there's a new version or some some new news but as of yet I have heard nothing okay so anyway thanks for stopping by go ahead and get these primitives loaded up and your life will be much easier okay so that's it in a nutshell. All right. Well, thanks for watching. As always, be a good person. Read a book once in a while. Get, get smart, man.
Okay, and uh, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.